Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, joining you for another teaching and learning session for our next generation NCLEX RN pointers, session number 20. So this time around, I'd like to invite you to be one of our thousands of passers worldwide. We're now available in 30, 33 countries. I'm so excited. Okay, and let's zero in on the testimonial of someone who discovered us through social media. Here we go. So first, let me congratulate Karen E. Salvador, USRN of St. Dominic College of Asia for passing the Hawaii Board of Nursing Next Generation NCLEX RN last June 30, 2023. And this is what she wants to share. I met Dr. Ray Gapus during my three days quick pick sessions. He's the G on NCLEX Review Center. He's an A1 type of man, thank you. I'm so humbled by that comment, that will only teach you what you need to know to pass the NCLEX. As he was teaching the class, I decided to give my, not 100%, look, 200% trust to him when he told the class, we don't need to hoard all NCLEX study materials, just the three books he gave us and the exams we had, we will pass. I can testify he was being truthful. Those three books I consider my treasure, especially NCLEX 311. Every page is worth reading. Everything is in there. Dr. Gapus was genuine the whole time. So if I've been asked, how did I pass? It's because I let Dr. Gapus lead my way and believe in him 200%. Thank you very much, Karen, for the very kind words. The three-day quick fix is really a gift for those who will attend these sessions. One, is very it's very affordable. So she took the three-day quick fix. Second, you will receive three books for free. And lastly, you get to meet Dr. Gapos, who obviously has a high passion for teaching that will really help you to pass NCLEX without a doubt. Again, I am so blessed to see that advertisement for the Gapos Review Center in my Facebook feeds. Through that, it had opened a door of a lifetime career for an individual like me. With Mr. G, it's possible. So thank you so much. And for the staff that has been so nice and accommodating, especially Miss Joanne, that's a shout out to our front desk officer, team leader. Miss Joanne, thank you so much for bringing in Karen to the team. Okay, and of course, the first question that you need to ask yourself when you're preparing for the NPLEX is, what should I study? The key is get an expert opinion. So whose expert opinion would you need? Here's mine. Here we go. So one of the things that a lot of you would fail to remember for the NCLEX would be, when do you need to refer a client to a registered dietitian? Now let's differentiate a registered dietitian from a nutritionist. These are two different individuals. The nutritionist, by definition, is not necessarily professional. Anyone who knows about food can claim to be a nutritionist. Therefore, the acknowledged member of the healthcare team is the registered dietitian, not the nutritionist. Now, the basic question is, who should we refer to the registered dietitian? Now, there's a lot of confusion related to patients who are post-stroke, the elderly patient, patients with dysphagia or dysarthria, because patients with dysphagia or with dysarthria, they need to be referred to a speech language pathologies would help them with exercises that will loosen their muscles of articulation. Now, if a patient has dysphagia and they have conditions of the GIT, like for example, they have colostomy or ileostomy, or sometimes NCLEX is very indirect. Instead of putting in the options, a client with colostomy or a client with ileostomy, they would say a client with Hirschsprung's disease. Why? Because the one of the cornerstones of management for clients with Hirschsprung's disease would be that the patient will either have temporary or permanent colostomy. So which simply means a client with Hirschsprung's disease needs to be referred to a registered dietitian in the same way that a patient with ulcerative colitis needs to be referred to a registered dietitian, a client with cystic fibrosis because they will need high calorie, high sodium, and high fat diet because you have to replenish the fats that they are not absorbing and they are excreting their stools. And then definitely a client with dementia must be referred to a registered dietitian. Now, take note that if a client with dementia would usually die, the patient or the, the relatives is specifically including 
uh, the nurse could potentially be emotionally affected and that's what we call this enfranchised grief when the grieving is not as what society expects it or when the grieving is associated with an illegitimate or unaccepted relationship like for example the death of a mistress the death of a boyfriend who is an addict or the presence of divorce those could trigger disenfranchised grieving okay once again you have to refer patients with gastrointestinal problems or pathological conditions to a registered dietitian. The patient with dysarthria and dysphagia should primarily be referred to a speech language pathologist. I just hope I was able to clarify that confusion. Next, niacin or vitamin B3. So it helps convert nutrients to energy. So this is needed especially by elderly patients. However, there are side effects that we need to focus on. And when we speak of side effects, it's the GIT that's first to react. So focus on diarrhea, bloating, and of course, the so-called niacin flash in which there's redness of the face and then the chest, like the Redman syndrome in a patient taking vancomycin. Now, you have to keep watch of the dose because when niacin is given at a dose that's more than 30 milligrams, eventually, the patient may experience rashes as well as pruritus. So the patient could have allergic reaction and that niacin can have the potential to worsen diabetes mellitus. So this shares instructions for the patient who's taking niacin. So we have to tell them to avoid taking alcohol and avoid rapid position changes as the patient may potentially experience orthostatic hypotension. So specifically, this is needed when you have elderly patients who are at risk for falls. So we need to tell them to uh, dangle their legs first before trying to stand up from a lying down or a sitting position. And of course, you have your rivaroxaban. Okay, now this is your Sarelto. It's an anticoagulant. It's given in patients with deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism. Now take note, if the patient has already deep vein thrombosis, they're given anticoagulants to prevent enlargement of the clots. But to prevent deep vein thrombosis, the patient may be put on sequential compression device or pneumatic compression device, which should be worn 24 seven. And when they need to go to the bathroom, they need to remove it because it increases the risk for falls. However, when they remove it, they have to make sure that it is within a time frame of less than two hours. Because if they get to remove it two hours or more, then they will need to obtain doctor's order before applying the pneumatic or the sequential compression device once again. So your rivaroxaban is actually an anticoagulant. Now, there are studies that say that it primarily prolongs the prothrombin time and it doesn't have an effect on the PTT. However, there are also literature that highlights that we need to monitor both the PT and the PTT, okay? So most importantly, therefore, you have to check your PT, your thrombin time, and your PTT, your partial thromboplastin time, okay? However, the most important thing that you need to check if your, patient's going, if your patient is going to take rivaroxaban is their kidney function. So primarily focus on laboratory tests such as your BUN and creatinine before the treatment begins and then at least once a year as they are taking the medication, for example, for a prolonged period of time. Okay, so the second question again, how do you study? The NCLEX is asking you to navigate technology-based questions. So you have to be exposed to technology that are aligned with your thinking and learning process as an Easterner. So I'd like to invite you to check out our learning tools, NCLEX are in Flash, available in Amazon. And of course, the local title is NCLEX 311. And of course, one of our latest innovations, your course shells, which would help you navigate through uh, the different subjects of the NCLEX RN in a very, very easy manner. And of course, you have to be in a conducive environment that should keep your focus. Look at this, okay? This is our NCLEX simulation room and this is our classroom. So once again, we want you to pass your tests. 
So I'd like to see you join us in our next generation NFLEX RN Flex program, the most flexible test preparations class for the NFLEX RN. So it's your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, our QBank with very simple rationale, the three books that are given for free, then the NGN strategies, and you can join me for free for my three-day quick fix sessions. It's usually eight hours a day for a very minimal fee of 3,499. Give us a call so that you can avail any of these at minimal cost. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check by the Rega who's saying, a functional concept a day, keep your NCLEX RN fears away. See you not in my next video. I'd like to see you in my class. Take care. You're going to be the next USRN.